Hi, this is Walter Weesey with Parks Fly Shop's fly tying video for the 20th of March 2010. Uh, may actually get it up tonight and have it be on the 19th, but I say the 20th to be safe. Um, today what I'm going to be tying for you is a fly that will become very important for us here on the Yellowstone River in about five to six weeks. This is a olive glasshead caddis emerger. Um, very simple fly, basic design was shown to us by a guide uh, we use occasionally, a guy, a guy by the name of Don McHugh, and I've kind of tweaked with it a little bit, and uh, this is kind of the version we wind up tying for the shop. Uh, this fly is a very simple fly, it's only got, besides the hook and the, the bead and the uh, thread, it's only got four materials. Um, and very quick, simple tie, you can lose them and not worry too much about it. It can be fished a lot of different ways. Uh, we fish this fly as a dropper beneath a dry caddis or something like a coachman trude during the caddis hatch. We'll also fish it, uh, especially early in the hatch or even before the hatch starts, as a dropper behind a streamer. Uh, we call that a second chance fly. Fish sees the big streamer, is attracted to it, but decides not to eat it at the last moment, but then sees this little guy trailing along behind it, and it'll take it like that. Um, and then we'll also fish it as kind of a traditional wet fly on the swing. So there's a lot of different things you can do with this fly. Uh, it's a good one to have in your box and you can also tie it in different colors. Okay, um, first step in tying the olive glass head caddis emerger. My hook is a Diariki 060, which is, they claim it's a 1XL nymph hook, but really it's sort of a standard length, which makes it just a little bit longer than the 0XL wet fly hook. Um, I use on a lot of my soft tackles. And the bead is an 11 aught glass bead. It's kind of a golden brown color. Uh, I use this bead a lot on soft tackles and nymphs both. Um, I've got a pattern I may do at some point this summer that's a, uh, a glass bodied caddis larva. And this is a bead I use on that too. It's a really good color. Usually buy them at a craft store. And I've got, in the book I'm working on, I've got a pretty good section in there about uh, the advantages of glass beads and I've got a size chart and so on in there. I use them quite a bit. My thread I'm wrapping on here is size 8 aught all I've done and I just kind of laid a thread base from the front to the back there. Now my legs and tail are a partridge feather, uh, kind of a brown, natural brown partridge feather and I've separated the fibers there to expose um, a center, the center section which I'm going to tie in as the tail. And I want that tail to extend about two-thirds of the, the length of the body. So a fairly short tail, unlike a mayfly. Now I'm just going to set the remainder of that feather aside because I'm going to use that same feather to create my legs. Now the body on this fly is a fairly roughly dubbed body of Arizona synthetic peacock which is kind of a shimmery synthetic dubbing which looks a bit like peacock. It, it really is. It's, it's a, not a peacock replacement, but it looks good in, in and of itself. It's kind of an olive with different colors of highlights in it. I'm going to dub that on there. Fairly thick, fairly rough. This fly is coarse, in, or this dubbing is coarse enough. You shouldn't need to uh, do a loop dubbing technique. If I was tying a real big one, I might loop dub it. Generally fish this fly in size 14 or 16. I'm doing the 14 here. Um, occasionally tie it as large as a, a 10 or a 12, but then it's really more of just a standard wet fly rather than a caddis emerger. It'll touch more. I'm gonna dub that up to about a bead length behind the eye there. Now the wing on this fly is just a strand of Antron yarn and I've clipped that off but what I'm going to do here is take that between my thumb and forefinger and just kind of really roughly and aggressively kind of roll that between my fingers and what that's going to do is it's going to spread out those fibers a little bit uneven the tips slightly and that's going to create sort of a the appearance of a natural taper um, one of the big advantages natural fibers have over synthetics like this is that they're naturally tapered. 
Uh, this is not tapered, but it, it kind of appears like it is if you roll it between your fingers. I'm going to tie that in and do extend about to the end of the body. I'm going to retrieve that partridge feather and I've kind of brushed those feather barbs back to the direction they kind of naturally want to go. I take those, hold it like this in my hold it like this between my thumb and forefinger. Just kind of measure that against the shank. I want those legs to extend most of the way back to the end of the body. I'm going to take my other hand and just grab the tips and sort of sweep them in alongside the body like that. And tie them in several several thread wraps. And you can tie that in either before or after the wing, that time I did after, it doesn't really matter. Now the head on this fly is going to be Peacock Black Ice Dub. But before I dub that on there, I want to do one thing here, and that's apply a little bit of super glue right to the, the wing tie-in point. And what that's going to do is uh, secure that wing. Um, generally when you're tying with a synthetic like I did here and you don't tie it up the entire shank you want to secure that somehow unlike natural hair which is gonna compress somewhat where you tie it in uh, the synthetics aren't gonna compress and so it's easier for them to pull out so that super glue is a little bit of a reinforcement to keep that from happening now my head isn't very big here I'm basically just covering up the wing butts so it's a few turns of that peacock black dubbing and then get your thread in there and whip finish. And there's completed glass head caddis emerger. Like I said, this is a fairly quick fly to tie. Um, you can go through quite a bit of them because uh, often when the Mother's Day caddis hatches happen and there's a lot of junk in the river and you're, you're fishing the, uh, the scum lines and stuff where a lot of sticks get, get caught. So you can, you can actually lose quite a few of these, especially if you're fishing them behind a streamer. Um, but it's a quick tie, it's a very good fly, and it's, it's a good basic template. You could tie this fly probably in a whole bunch of different colors and have it work. And uh, it would certainly work as a standard wet fly as well as an emerger. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us, and thank you for watching. Uh, I'll note that this fly is another one that's going to be in my book.